Welcome to Cape Chronicle. I'm Mike Rennick. Robert Harris Jr. joins us in the studio to talk today about his work with the community gardens all over Cape Girardeau. Robert, welcome. Good work. Thank you, sir. It's good to have you here today. Thank you so much. It's so, a pleasure being here. So you, uh, you, you've got a green thumb, don't you? Uh, yes, sir, I do. And that, and that started at a very young age, Robert. Yes, sir, it did. Been when I was very young as a kid. And tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about that, how that kind of began for you. I had a fascination for plants. Okay. And I found myself wanting to grow plants, wanting to do gardening, fascinated by fruit trees and orchards. And it just kind of grew from there. And as you obviously have uh, find that craft a little bit, you've, you've made it something the community can now be a part of as well. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we have the gardens. We have two gardens, one that I manage in South Cape and the other, Melissa, with the university. And we work at the gardens and we work to feed people some of this produce we take to the needy families and especially the elderly. And it's a way for me to do a well check on some of the people that I know. So what, what uh, you kind of hit on it there a little bit, what was the idea behind starting these gardens? What, was there a need that you saw? There, I live in South Cape and I see what others don't see. Sure. And I saw a lot of older people that I had worked in the, growing up as a kid, I grew up in the Boot Hill working the fields. And I've seen people move up here, they didn't have quite enough. And it was always short. And I wanted to do something to help them. My mother and I, she was my partner at the time. She helped me with this. And now the university a horticulture class and Cape County Juvenile helps me with it now. And how do they assist you? What, what do they do for you? Well, what they've done is the university comes out and plant and help me to do the planting, cleaning up the garden every spring and in the fall when we need to put everything to bed, take everything down, they help me with that. And Cape County Juvenile comes and they help me with support in keeping the gardens and everything up. So are you, I know you, you mentioned that they are there to help you, but are you recruiting other uh, community members to, to also help and be a part of that mission? Some of the neighbors sometimes come. Okay. But a lot of them that I know work and they come in when they can. And so, but we have people who come and some may work a day or two and they've just volunteered their time that way. But it's a case to where whoever can comes in to help. And so what, you know, after the, you know, the, the work is done and, and uh, the garden is, is ready, so to speak, uh, where, do, where does the produce go? How, how do, does it, someone <clears throat> access it? Well, we have it set up to where people can come and get things, but then we also pick some ourselves, and that we make sure goes to the elderly, the disabled, the vulnerable, all those people who can't do for themselves. And so, but it's a community share thing uh, where we just have it there and the city of Cape has been good about working with us and helping us to maintain everything. So it's kind of a who's able to come out and get something is there. So it's really a big, as, as the name of it says, a big community effort uh, to not only plant the garden, nurture the garden, but also get the food to the people that need it. Right, and so the food to the people who need it is what I do myself. So you're, but, you manage that side of it? I manage that side of it myself. Okay. But uh, other help, I have people who have to have a day or two off from work, they come and help. But we could always use people to help. But we take what we get and we work with that. I think I heard you say before, something unique about the, um, the garden is that, uh, you know, when you, when you purchase food from a store, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of names on there, you don't, you right. don't recognize maybe what they are, and you know, this is kind of unpackaged, and it's, it's, it's uh, there for someone to eat and, and know that it, it, it came right from the ground that, that we live and work on. That's correct, sir. A lot of people now want to know the food that they're eating. Uh, a lot of people, when they eat something, they kind of want to know, is this local? Is this something that 
I know is not heavily processed or sure. whatever. And so, but it's a lot of people that you look at and you want to make sure that these people who are older who can't do anymore for themselves, you have the food for them and they know that it's fresh, they know that it's healthy, they know that it's, it's good food. So what, ty what types of food are, are you growing in these gardens? We, we do a lot of tomatoes. A lot of tomatoes. A lot of tomatoes. Fried green tomatoes is something that is big. But we also do zucchini, we do squash, we do cabbage, uh, we do lettuce. Uh, we do, at times, we do sweet potatoes. We do different crops and people can come. We have also grown cucumbers. And we do that and we get this, make it available to where people can come and get the produce because the more you pick it, the more it keeps bearing. And so it just works out good that way. So do you have, I know like, you know, sometimes for certain meals, you know, there's like grandma's secret recipe, you know, for, you know, for pumpkin pie or whatever okay. the case may be. Are there any, are there secrets that, that you have that you hold when it comes to uh, gardening that, that, that make for the best produce? Well, when I grew up, I grew up with a lot of people who had been sharecroppers, worked in the fields, and they taught me, my father, my mother, all those people, and some of their neighbors taught me so many different things. So I honor them by keeping those things that they taught me. It's kind of like Mr. Joe's secret barbecue blend, you know. Sure. Uh, it's something that you just kind of keep, and you want to honor them by using what they've taught you and keep these things, and maybe I can find some younger people to pass this on down to, and it just stays something to where the people that's going on will have a way of somewhere of still being here. And so that's what I try to do. So there's, it's a tradition. It's a tradition, it's a tradition that started right. many years ago, and right. you're, you're building upon that and using those pieces and want to pass that along. Right, and that's exactly what it is. It's a tradition. And I know you're, you're real big on trying to get kids involved uh, to carry that tradition on. Well, we work, we work with juvenile and different other groups that we can find that, we, that really want to be a part of this. But it's something that needs to be passed down and it's something that we try to do and the kids can learn and learn some of the things on how to feed themselves, how to take care of themselves. That's something that they can know and we just try to pass it down whenever we can. Well, you're doing a great job, okay. Robert. Thank we you. thank you so much. Thank you for what you do for our community. Again, uh, Master Gardener Robert Harris Jr. and two community gardens serving our people right here in Cape Girardeau. So thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much, sir.